Batman 89 begins with Harvey Dent on a date with Barbara Gordon, who wonders if the fancy dinner is on the city's tab. Harvey says there'll be no business discussed at dinner since this is a special occasion. Barbara thinks he means Halloween, wondering if that's why they are dressed up like rich people eating at a fancy restaurant. Dent thinks that they deserve it since he is an ambitious man and this time next year he could be the state AG, and he's not bad looking either and they make a hell of a team. Barbara soon catches a glimpse of something moving outside at the window, but Harvey tells her they are 59 stories up, so it couldn't have been anything. Elsewhere, the news reports on Gotham Halloween festivals and how they are being allowed to go ahead thanks to the lower violence levels, but Halloween is still unsafe for children. A reporter interviews a man dressed like Batman, thinking he's just dressed like the vigilante for Halloween, but the man says he dons this costume because the police force is feeble, and them wearing the bat means their businesses and personal property are safe. A man dressed like Joker is also interviewed, asked why he glorifies a dangerous criminal, but he doesn't really have an answer. In the crowd, a man begins counting down as Harvey presents Barbara with an engagement ring, telling her to take it home and think it over, also offering her up a coin, saying that if it's heads, she accepts, and for tails, she doesn't. Barbara, however, knows the coin is a trick coin and it has two head sides, telling Harvey to keep it as he hears a loud boom outside. Down on the street, Joker's gang raid a set of armored cars they have blown off the road. Batman meanwhile watches on, telling Gordon to send in the big guns since he's figured out the gang's plan. Batman leaps into action as the gang hook up the armored cars to a chopper that has come in, airlifting them out as Batman lands on them, firing a grapple into the wall of a building and anchoring the chopper to the building as he cuts the cables of the cars free. The chopper pilots can't stabilize the chopper crashing it into a building as they jump from the vehicle to save their lives. A voice says that they have a new plan, wanting them to blow Batman away. The gang shower Batman with machine gun fire, forcing him to use the Gotham Bank logo, a giant penny, as cover as the Batmobile races into the street, giving its owner some cover as he gets inside. The police arrive to round up the goons as Harvey and Barbara leave the restaurant, with Dent on the phone, learning that the National Guard will be sent into Gotham, but he knows that that's a bad idea, knowing Gotham is always good for a freak show, demanding to know where Gordon is. One of Joker's goons snatches Barbara's purse, taking off into the alleys as Harvey gives chase, but he's confronted by another goon with a gun who wants his Rolex. Harvey begins to remove the watch, but uses it as a knuckle duster, smashing the goon in the face with it and taking his gun. Harvey says he can't decide what to do with him, wanting to flip a coin, knowing that heads they die, but tails they'll walk. He flips the coin and Barbara hears a gunshot, running into the alley to find Harvey has fired the gun into the air to scare the goons off. She knows that Harvey could have been killed since she can replace a purse, but she can't replace him. Batman speeds by in the Batmobile as Harvey knows that there isn't room on the streets for law-abiding citizens anymore. The next morning, Bruce is awoken early by Alfred since he has a visitor, finding Harvey waiting for him in his kitchen. Harvey apologizes for bothering Bruce before noon, asking if he had a rough night and the man says it was more tricks than treats. Harvey hopes that they can trust one another since the city is in chaos and he has a way to fix it and to start, he needs Bruce's help to go up against Jim Gordon. Bruce knows that he's dating Barbara, learning that they are actually engaged, but he doesn't know if that's a good thing. He asks what Harvey wants from him, learning that Harvey wants his backing since they are going to take down Batman. The news meanwhile reports on Joker's gang's failed attempt to steal the armored cars and how it brought about the National Guard in town. Bruce notes how Batman stopped them from stealing $31 million, but Harvey says that there was $26 million in damage when the chopper hit the building. The news says that one security guard inside one of the vans was killed in the fall and another has a skull fracture. Harvey knows that this is untenable and crime is everywhere and the cops can't handle it, so they've brought in a few of the masked vigilantes to fly around the city and keep other criminals busy, and before long there are 2,000 knuckleheads wanting in on this. He knows this is Gordon's mess and it's time he owned it. Harvey tells Bruce about the night before he and Barbara were almost killed in an alley as Batman drove by, but that's the new normal for the city now. Bruce notes how he mentioned a crew of vigilantes, knowing that Batman is one of them, but who are the others? So Harvey says that Batman isn't just one person, since no one person could do all this, and there is a group of them, thinking that Batman is Jim Gordon's personal hit squad. Bruce doesn't, ag Bruce doesn't disagree and wants to help Harvey, but Jim and him go way back. Harvey says that there there is no hurry if he doesn't mind troops in their streets. Dent takes his leave as Alfred says that he's on a crusade and he thinks Harvey has a point. Bruce says that he won't turn on Jim since he was the cop 
on duty the night his parents died, but Alfred says that he was referring to the larger picture. But Bruce thinks that he's doing more harm than good as Batman, so he'll quit as Harvey outside calls Barbara, telling her that it was no sale to Bruce, which he figured. He asks Barbara what they found in the Batman locker, and Barbara says she's got a full inventory, but Dent's office will need to submit some paperwork if he wants to play with the toys. Harvey wants to know what she's got, so they learn that the Batman locker has a few detachable fenders from the Batmobile, some boomerangs, throwing stars, and even targeting systems. Harvey knows that Santa's elves must have one hell of an R&D department. He thanks Barbara as he pulls into his old neighborhood, where a group of kids play in the street soon spotting Harvey's fancy car. Harvey gets out to see Mr. Otis, who wonders why the DA is all the way down in Burnside. Harvey knows that it's routine maintenance as he offers his keys up to one of the kids, asking if he wants to take it for a ride, but Otis tells them to leave the car alone. Coming into Otis's repair shop, Otis warns him not to get his fancy suit covered in axle grease. Harvey says that he's got to represent since the kids around there need to know and see a prosperous black man who isn't an athlete or a drug dealer. Otis knows that the kids don't see him at all since he's moving with a different crowd now. Harvey remembers where he came from but he has to roll with a different crowd and hide his real face with the car and clothes. Otis asks what he's trying to be, so Harvey tells him he's trying to be a big man, remembering how Otis showed him the trick coin for the first time, telling the boy that if it's heads, he'll be a big man, or tails, he'll be nothing but a bum. Harvey calls heads, finding he's going to be a big man. Otis knows that he's always called heads and always won, and he never asks to look at the coin, knowing that he was a gullible child. Harvey says that he just trusted the man and still does, flicking his coin at him as Otis asks what he wants, since it must be something bad. That night, Reverend Cecil Culp shows the crowd a Batman-themed sweater, knowing that the young people wear the colours of the lawless maverick, knowing that they tell their children to obey and respect the law. Yet Commissioner Gordon embraces the vigilante as a judge, jury, and executioner who hides behind a mask. The man asks if Gotham City Council could vote for a no-confidence vote in Jim Gordon as Bruce watches on TV, knowing that Harvey works fast. Alfred alerts him to the bat signal, knowing it's not their usual bat signal from Commissioner Gordon as the bat has been crossed out. Bruce wonders who threw the switch as at the signal, Harvey and Bullock wait for Batman. Bullock knows that he's not coming because Batman isn't stupid and he's got an electronic back channel to Gordon. Harvey tells Bullock to relax since he's just trying to say hello to Batman and build a bridge with him. Bullock knows they always need to replace the signal since a beat cop comes up here every once in a while and smashes it with a sledgehammer. Batman meanwhile watches from a dark rooftop, knowing it's Dent and Bullock and three snipers overlooking the point. Gordon, who's listening in, can't believe that there are snipers, knowing that's Bullock's doing. He says he he knew about Dent being engaged to Barbara thanks to Bruce Wayne telling him and the whole department knew before he did. He says that they don't talk much, wondering why he's telling Batman. Batman says he doesn't mind as Jim tells him he's not long for this job and this channel might be compromised. He gives Batman one last piece of advice, wanting him to stay off the streets since the National Guard have orders to bring him in alive or otherwise. Jim thanks Batman one final time, knowing that they tried as he smashes his communicator. The National Guard meanwhile announced a new curfew for the city as one spots Batman above, hearing gunshots nearby. Batman follows after a shopkeeper who was shooting at a thief, but the National Guard catch the shopkeeper, telling him to put his hands above his head as the hooded thief makes it home, telling his baby girl not to cry since he brought home some food. He finds the man shot right through the diapers however as Batman climbs through his window. The man pleads with him not to hurt his baby or him but Batman says he won't, wanting to know where the money he took is. The man says he never took any money, only diapers and food for his daughter. Batman asks how old he is and where the girl's mother is as the voice says that she's outside. Batman goes to check the fire escape where the voice says that they are scared of heights when he's attacked by a man in a yellow cape. The being says that this isn't Batman's house, telling him to knock next time as he throws Batman off the railing, forcing the hero to fire his grapple and hang on. The hooded man passes off $8 to the man and his baby baby, telling him that's all he's got as the National Guard find Batman hanging in the street, telling him not to move or they'll shoot. 
Batman escapes from the National Guard by using a flashbang. But during his escape up the roof, the man he was after is shot by the police accidentally and falls from the balcony, leaving the baby he was looking after an orphan. Later on, Alfred finds the defeated Bruce in the Batcave, telling his faithful friend that he really screwed up. Harvey and Barbara meanwhile test out one of Batman's boomerangs the police confiscated, which hits Dent in the arm thanks to Barb programming it to do so. Harvey wants to do a pattern search on the device to see who owns it, but Barb already did that and it came back with nothing. Harvey gets ready to leave, knowing that whomever built the million dollar boomerang in tech doesn't need millions since they already have millions. He tells Barb that they need to go to Burnside as outside Jerome's shop, people are protesting thanks to the death of the man from the night before. Jerome goes to see Drake, one of his very hard workers who is using the internet to source some car parts for them. Knowing garages around the country should go online and set up online shopping, as Jerome knows that's actually a very good idea. Harvey comes by to see Drake about some car parts, knowing the kid knows his stuff and he wants him to look at some pictures about some exotic models the police have confiscated. Drake refuses to help since despite Harvey being a nice cop, he's still a cop. Jerome assembles at the council of the community and the meeting about the man who was killed the night before. Harvey says that he wants them to protest but do it peacefully with no violence since the federal cops are looking for any chance to unleash their hounds. One of the men says that when Dent riles people up like he did the other night, it's not him or the white donors who suffer, it's them in Burnside. Dent wants to help however he can as later, the protest is addressed by Dent and the others, but Drake doesn't care what Dent has to say, heading home as he sees a gang that represents Batman try and rob a store for a game station. Suddenly the men are attacked by a cloaked being, and the gang try to warn the men that they are Batman, but the man says that Batman never meant Jack to him. Some onlookers come by, and the Batman gang try and lie and say the cloaked being was robbing the store, but the man wants him to repeat the words, getting him to repeat that he was robbing the store. The being tells the onlookers to turn them into the cops or leave them in a dumpster around the corner. As the men are carted off, some kids think the hooded man was called Robin, like Robin Hood. At Wayne Manor, Alfred accepts delivery of a giant penny, one he finds Bruce bought. Bruce meanwhile trains while listening to the attack the cloaked man conducted the night before and how vigilantes are gripping the city and it's some sort of psychological deficiency. Bruce asks the TV to be muted, angered that anyone would ever believe that as he tells the arriving Alfred that the coin is to brighten up the Batcave. Alfred reminds him of the priceless art he has in storage, but Bruce wants the coin there since it saved his life, snapping at his friend, but he quickly apologizes, saying that he he was bored that night and chased that man who was trying to just feed a little girl and he got ambushed by this ghost and it was like being attacked by himself. He knows there's no way he can make that man's death right as Alfred tells him his self-imposed hiatus isn't helping his disposition and he could always turn towards philanthropy. Out in the city, Harvey and Barb talk about Harvey getting lots of news coverage thanks to his speech, but Harvey cites how when he was talking with his people, he felt like he was back home and one of them. Soon the press come to hound Dent again and ask him questions but someone calls him a two-faced bastard. That someone was Harvey Bullock who was angry what Dent did by betraying their code and paying them back in equality and two-tiered justice. The press continue to ask their questions as Harvey and Barb go inside where Harvey finds Bruce waiting for him knowing that he's got a crazy idea. Elsewhere the Batman intend on doing something about the kid who beat them up which is lucky since one of them followed him back home to the garage and knows where he lives. Bruce and Harvey meanwhile go to Burnside, telling the council that Bruce will stake every child of school age in Burnside four years of Gotham State University, or a trade or tech school of their choice, if they want it. Bruce knows he'll keep doing it until he's out of money, which he knows won't be for a while. They ask why Bruce is interested in Burnside and he mentions Harvey's speech spoke to him and he knows about the little girl who was left an orphan from gun violence, just like he was. Many of the others know what that's like and they know fixing it with money won't help, but Bruce knows systemic problems like this will take generations to fix, but there are some problems he can fix with his money now. Drake hears him not caring for Bruce's charity as the others want to think on Bruce's offer. After Bruce leaves, the others think that there has to be some type of angle there, thinking that he maybe owns the trade schools or something. Harvey believes in Bruce and thinks they are overthinking it a bit too much, as he goes to meet with Barbara and Bruce arrives at his car. Both of them hear a crash, seeing the garage on fire. Donning a mask and grabbing some of his batterings from his car, Bruce rounds the corner to find Catwoman has taken down the Batmen, the ones who set the fire, saying that she was following Bruce and before he rushes off to fight those 
fires, she wants a kiss. Harvey and Barb meanwhile see the fires and rush back as Jerome says that Drake is still inside. Harvey, without thinking about it, rushes inside, calling the boy's name amongst the flames. The cars in the garage blow up and Harvey falls into the floor, knocked out as some destroyed car batteries begin leaking their burning, boiling acid down towards his face. Harvey recovers and heroically saves Drake from the inferno. Welcomed by a cheering crowd in the loving arms of Barbara Gordon, Drake thanks him for the save as Bruce knows that's the ballsiest thing he's ever seen. Dense heroics earn him the front page of Gotham Globe's newspaper and the event is covered by the various news stations of the city, talking about his save and how Jim Gordon resigned after the no confidence vote. In his office, his people tell him his poll numbers are through the roof and at this point, the election is just a formality since he's bound to win. They ask Harvey what he wants exactly Exactly, but Harvey knows he owes them nothing since he's not there for business, he's there to do what's right. One year later, Governor Dent is met by Commissioner Barbara Gordon, who is surprising him since she couldn't wait till the weekend to see him. Barbara reveals the big news that Bruce Wayne flipped on Batman, revealing that he is just a small army of mercenaries that Bruce backs, and this goes well beyond him, and half the city council is in on it along with some of Gotham's big shots. She knows that there is something off about Bruce though, but Dent knows that this this is what happens when you get raised by your butler. Suddenly Jerome appears asking if he's going to be a big man or a bum. Dent wonders where he came from as suddenly he's back in front of Jerome's shop, but told to call heads or tails on the coin flip. Dent calls for heads like he always does, but this time, coin lands on tails, something that's impossible seeing as it's a two-headed coin. A voice tells Dent to cover his face and not breathe in the sulfuric acid as in reality, Dent is dragged out of the fire by Drake and Bruce as the building explodes. The men are safe though as Dent gets up, scaring the hell out of a firefighter as he wanders off towards the crowd. People begin to scream as Barbara and the others see that half of Harvey's face has been burned off by the battery acid. The man collapses as he's put on a stretcher by the medics. Barbara thanks Bruce for the help as Drake knows that Dent isn't going to be fine. Bruce knows that he inhales sulfuric acid and he will be lucky if he makes it to the hospital alive. The Reverend knows that Dent went in to save Drake who says that he was on the roof since he was feeding his birds but he also saw the guys that did it and they went up the street. Dent meanwhile tells the EMT that he can't breathe and everything itches. The medic gives him something to knock him out as Barb wants them to tell her his real chances. The medic says that pulmonary edema is the immediate threat and past that if he inhaled the fumes and they got past his lungs, he could die in six months. Meanwhile, Bruce is accosted by a reporter wanting to know what it's like to be a hero but he doesn't want to give any comment, hating that he is being photographed. Harvey Bullock comes by to see him, asking why he was in Burnside. Bruce says it was personal business, trying to get out of the questioning thanks to an important conference call he has with Zurich. Jerome is interviewed, telling the cops that it was arson and Drake says he saw them from the roof, knowing it was four guys wearing bat gear, remembering the kids up the street dressed like Batman that got beaten up. Bruce soon notices that Catwoman is on a roof nearby, racing home where he finds reporters are camped out. Bruce isn't happy with the reporters there as Alfred tells him that maybe he should probably use the alternative entrance. The next day, Drake is woken by Jerome and the Reverend, who give him a box of donations since Drake's stuff was all destroyed in the fire. Drake appreciates it as Jerome reminds him he is a hero as well and Bruce Wayne shouldn't get all of the credit. He asks why the boy slept in the van since he's welcome to stay with him and his family but Drake knows the people who destroyed the shop were actually after him and while Jerome has been nothing but kind to him, he will make this up to him. Bruce Meemol is awoken from his Catwoman filled dream by the cat Selina left him as Alfred shows him the flowers Barbara sent over. He also finds that he's on the front page of the paper as he finds the reporters are still camped outside. Alfred tells him of the myriad of calls he's been getting from the reporters as well as Gordon and people who want him to run for governor. That's not all as Drake Winston also called as Bruce knows that he thinks Batman carved up the arsonists. Alfred hopes with Selina back on the scene she will come and take the black cat she left Bruce but Bruce knows the cat's no trouble despite Alfred knowing better. In downtown Gotham, a lawyer says that his clients who supposedly committed the arson have been targeted twice in one week and have been assaulted and beaten and humiliated. They are filing a multi-million dollar lawsuit against the police. Gordon tries to get Culp to make this go away, but the man knows he overestimates his powers and he'll do what he can to deal with it. Bruce meanwhile meets with a doctor regarding Dent's condition, soon also meeting with Barbara, introducing her to the doctor, knowing that he wants to fly Dent to Switzerland to receive the best in the world treatment. Barbara knows their insurance definitely won't cover that since they're normal people, but Bruce says that he can deal with it, knowing that they need Dent back. 
Harvey, meanwhile, awakens in a nightmare where a version of himself shows him how he is the version where Dent saved the people while the Harvey in the bed didn't. His other self reminds him of the quantum mechanics lecture they once heard about how the universe can diverge from one event, wanting to show him something. His mind shows him different worlds, one where Dent never lived and died as a baby, or one where he went to jail as a kid and his career never took off, or in his perfect world where he ran for governor and married Barbara Gordon. He knows it took a million tiny accidents to put him there and a million tiny others to put Dent in that bed. The perfect Dent shows him the coin, wanting him to think of the power in the choices they make, and they can split the universe in two with a toss of a coin. Dent awakens to Barb waiting on him telling him that he got almost 200 cards and letters wishing him well. She tells him that Bruce came by to check on him, but Dent gets angry at the mention of the supposed White Knight. He snaps out of it though, knowing that Bruce is a good man and his true friend. He snaps again and knows that he needs his coin, beginning to etch into one side of it, knowing that it's got no power and he's fixing it, since he's giving it two possible outcomes, a yes or a no, or a black and a white. He flips the coin, wondering if Barbara loves him, as she says that he knows she does, and luckily, the coin proves it, making Dent think that the universe works for him. Elsewhere, Batman suits up and gives chase to Catwoman, catching up to her as the woman knows that he would follow the note she left. Bruce knows that this is the rooftop where she stabbed him in the ribs, but Selina reminds him that he burnt her with acid on that rooftop as well, and she still has to wear long sleeves because of it. The two kids as Catwoman asks if he's going to punish her, but Bruce thinks that maybe they should take a holiday down the Mexican coast for three weeks. Selina knows that sounds very tempting, but she's got a civilian business venture to deal with, telling Batman that she's being paid by some rich creeps to put people behind bars. Batman thinks that she's holding grudges as Selina snaps, saying she always forgets he's always about morality while beating up street punks while the billionaire boys club bleeds the city dry. Batman defends himself, saying that he stopped a $31 million heist, but Selina knows he doesn't even know who was behind it or why they were stealing the money. She says that he doesn't notice the criminals he eats lunch with every day, and the two of them could own this city if he just got over himself. She mentions that she talks to her shrink about Bruce, surprising the man, but she knows that the therapist thinks it's all just fantasy since she's got six clients claiming to be the Batman. She knows there's even a 14 year old boy who thinks he's Batman's sidekick and wears a yellow cape. Bruce tries to get some more information from her as explosions rock the city as the arsonists attack again. Bruce knows the city is starting to burn, but Selina knows that that's the type of problem they can't help with. Catwoman knows that they should probably start over, thinking that fires are romantic, as Dent watches the news report on the other arson attacks. The Reverend knows that a good man lays in hospital fighting for his life because of them. He promises to continue Dent's fight since he was the soul of Gotham. Dent flips his coin to see if he'll still be the soul of Gotham, but lands on the marked side, knowing to hell with Gotham and its soul. Outside, the people of Burnside begin marching through Gotham, telling the press that Harvey Dent believed in the system, but it failed him. The pastor leads his congregation towards City Hall as Bullock assembles the cops, telling them that no one gets past them. Commissioner Gordon calls, demanding he provides safe passage for the crowd, but Bullock knows that something is going to happen at City Hall, and they are all going to head them off. He turns off the radio as the cops tell Drake that he has to head back eight blocks if he wants to get onto the highway since they're cornered off this section of the city. Drake thanks the man but pulls the van into an alley nearby, hoisting a huge bag onto a nearby roof. Bullock tells his men to get ready since the people are trapped, telling them to hold their line as the giant bag is dropped into the police van nearby. It explodes paint all over the area, covering Bullock and his men as the people disperse. They spot a being on the roof that they think is Batman, who dumps another bag down into the crowd, but this time it's filled with spray cans, using it on the riot cops who are attacking the crowd. The crowd also gets some tear gas, throwing it at the cops as more police fans arrive. Suddenly, a gas can is flung at them, exploding in a fireball and diverting the fans as the crowd call for everyone to get out of the area. Bullock frantically tries to get his gas mask on as Gordon arrives, knowing that he just engineered 
the biggest cock up in the history of the GCPD, taking the bullhorn and ordering all of the officers to stand down as Robin watches from the rooftops, telling the city this is what happens when someone comes to his house, demanding they stay out of it. At the Batcave, Bruce thinks his new giant penny looks great as Alfred brings him the newspapers which detail the masks being taken down the cops operation in Burnside. Bruce knows that it wasn't him as Alfred reveals that Gordon is taking most of the criticism for it and the mayor will be asking for his resignation. Alfred says that he did some research on Drake Winston, knowing the name rang a bell so he found a microfilm on the Burnside banner from the library, telling Bruce that it was a weekly newspaper devoted to Gotham's African American community from early in the century. Bruce is surprised that he was able to borrow that from the library, but Alfred says when you own the library, they let you check out anything. Barbara meanwhile is shocked to find that Harvey is up and wandering, demanding to know why there are no mirrors in his bathroom. She tries to get him to sit down, but he wants to help the people marching in the streets. Barbara knows he doesn't need to worry about that since they need to make a big decision on this reconstructive surgery that Bruce is paying for, since they can't wait long. Harvey however demands his coin, ranting about dying in the garage and the alley where the punk stole her purse, but the universe kept him alive. He finds the coin, knowing that he must have one true destiny and he can find it with that coin. He begins flipping the coin, singing a song as Barbara goes to call Bruce, telling him about Harvey's deteriorating state. Later on, Harvey knocks out an orderly taking his pills and cards and escaping the hospital, seeing his face in the glass reflection of a door, which asks what is he staring at. The next day, Drake is told that Alfred is there waiting for him by Mr. Otis, hoping that he doesn't tell anyone where he's going. Drake gets into Alfred's car and is asked if he wants some music, but Drake has his own mixtape and headphones ready. Bruce meanwhile looks over the microfilm, finding that the Winston name was big in the automotive industry. But then Wayne Motors acquired Winston Automotive in a forced buyout which resulted in mass layoffs. Drake and Alfred return to Wayne Manor where Drake is shown around the massive estate, asking if one of the many portraits on the walls is of Preston Wayne since his grandma used to always talk about him since he was in the automotive industry. He soon sees an unfinished family portrait of Thomas, Martha and Bruce, learning that the artist was to come back when the flowers at the estate were in bloom, but they died before it could happen. Bruce arrives, shaking Drake's hand, knowing that they are somewhat partners in crime. Sitting for some tea, Drake tells Bruce that there is a lot of violence out there in the city and Bruce can put a stop to it. Bruce wonders how so, so Drake says that he can identify the arsonist and get justice, but Bruce can't since he made a sworn statement to the police. Drake knows however he was lying since he beat the men up. Bruce knows he didn't do that and Drake gave a statement as well and he didn't mention any of this either. Drake wants him to tell the truth so Bruce says that Catwoman did it but Drake laughs at that, not buying it for a second since Catwoman is an urban legend and they both know that he did it and won't admit it. Bruce thinks that it's time he left, so Drake reveals he bought a vial of the battery acid that took off Dent's face, uncorking it and readying it to throw at Bruce. Bruce tackles the boy in an instant, throwing him into a bookshelf, but some of the liquid hits his face. Nothing happens however as Drake reveals that it was just water and he just did that to confirm that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Alfred arrives with a taser, but Bruce tells him to help Drake up instead. The boy knew he was owed the beatdown thanks to the time on the fire escape and Bruce realizes he was that same being who stopped him apprehending the diaper thief and the one who took on the cops recently. Drake knows that Batman wasn't going to do it as Bruce tells Alfred that the boy will be staying for dinner since they've got a lot to talk about. At GCPD, Selena Kyle arrives to meet with Barbara to sort out the department's computers which have been infected with a new virus. Selena knows all about the virus and how a hacker sitting three states away could theoretically see every word the cops are typing thanks to the keystroke logger, hoping the station wants to take out a long-term service contract with her. Barbara knows that she's been too preoccupied, finding the name of the company Selena works for, Leaky Lines Incorporated, quite funny. She is impressed however with the woman's resume and how she worked for Cowan Group, Wayne Tech, as well as starting at Shrek Enterprises, finding it quite awful what happened to Max Shrek. Selena thinks about it every day, wondering if there will ever be an arrest, but Barbara knows with the Batman and Penguin being involved, it's hard to say since there is a long list of suspects. 
Soon an officer comes by to get Barbara, told by some detectives that Harvey has escaped the hospital with a year's supply of painkillers after assaulting an orderly. Anala soon relays information of a man fitting Dent's description trying to get into Barbara's apartment building. Barbara knows he keeps clothing and money and other things there, apologising to Selena since she needs to leave. Selena is more than happy to stay around and scan the hard drives for her and get rid of any viruses that she may have planted herself. Dent meanwhile goes through his computer at Barb's apartment as the cops finish up searching the place. The computer suddenly dings with a new email as the cops come to check on the still on computer. Dent emerges from the shadows, smashing the man over the head with the phone before escaping the building with his files, hiding away in an alley. Flipping a coin to decide if he goes to the roofs or down to the subway, the coin lands on the tails making the man race through the Gotham subway as he talks to his other half, who says that they are now after them and they need a safe house. Dent knows that it's because they attack the cops, calling himself a sick freak as he jumps onto the tracks, evading a guard and the shouting people and hiding in a doorway as a train rushes by. Told by his other half that they don't fit in above ground anymore, so they need to go subterranean. Later on, Dent tells himself that they have been walking for over an hour, but his other side can't decide if they know where they are going or haven't figured it out yet. Soon they find an old Burnside station, knowing that this will be their new office and the station was supposed to connect them with the jobs and stores and the heart of the city, but the money ran out and the future dried out with it. Two-Face tells him not to be sad since in a week they'll have everything they need to help their friends and destroy their enemies. Bruce and Drake meanwhile talk over dessert, with Drake explaining that he knew Bruce was Batman thanks to the head tilt he does when he's nervous. Bruce wonders why he didn't turn him in and Drake says he was going to, but then he ran into that burning building to save Mr. Dent, so he figured that he wanted to make amends. He knows terrorising bad guys is fine, but it's a dead end and he needs to inspire people to stand up on their own and make the kind of world they want to live in. Drake wants to go see the Batmobile, so Bruce takes him down into the cave where he jokes about he's going to chain the boy up in his dungeon. Drake wonders if Bruce is ever normal and Bruce says he is sometimes since it's useful. Drake soon is shown the Batcave, amazed at everything inside as he learns that the cave is actually natural and Bruce only fixed it up a little. He sits on the Batbike, which Bruce knows needs some tweaks and he hasn't taken it out yet, as Drake says that he can't ask the man to rat himself out since he's got too much to lose, but the town will be boiling over very soon unless somebody keeps a lid on it, and he'll need a helper to stop that from happening. Elsewhere, Two-Face beats up a man who continues to cry out for his lawyer. Dent knows that the man hasn't figured out yet that he's not there in an official capacity, wanting him to think of him as a prospective employer, knowing that the man will go to jail for the job he recently pulled and they are letting him walk so he can lead them to the real money men behind the operation. The man says he never knew he was working for someone higher, but knew something was up when they wanted his crew to hit two armoured cars filled with $31 million, and it's like they were begging to be robbed. Dent believes the man, knowing that if he stole the money once, he can do it again, learning that his cut was originally $1 million, but Dent knows if the man does the job for him, he will double the money, pointing his gun at the man's face and making him agree. Two-Face flips the coin, telling the man that he wants his clown crew as well, but the man reminds him there is no Joker gang since most of Joker's men are in jail or dead, but there is a subculture of sociopathic punks who dress up and raise hell, but in that subculture there is a class of professional criminal who use the clown gear as a sort of camouflage to get away with larger crimes. The criminals come to see Two-Face, who tells them if his plan works, they will walk away with a fortune, and if it doesn't work, they will get to have a bit of good destructive fun. Elsewhere, Barbara watches more punks being brought into the station before leaving for home, where she hears people talking about Harvey Dent's supposed death as she spots more of the police who are watching over her. Heading home, she meets with her father who says that he's there on official business. Barb knows that this is about Harvey, but she says that she wants him brought in alive since he needs help thanks to his painkiller addiction and no doubt infections on his face. She demands her father not light his pipe but he says there's no tobacco in it and it's more of a security blanket for him, asking if Harvey said anything about Lincoln's savings and loan since he stole files from his office. Barb reminds him that Harvey was the DA but she knows in Gotham people obviously are tried and convicted with no thought for the good in Harvey's heart or that he's actually going through something. Jim knows that everything she said about him was 
right and he has let her and everyone else down. Just wishing that he lived up to her opinion of him since it was the proudest day of his life when she joined the force. He hopes that things work out for her since there is never enough idealists in the line of work they have since the job chews them up and spits them out. After Jim leaves, Barb finds a paper with a message from Harvey in it, asking her to meet him at the park in their usual spot. The Batmobile meanwhile speeds through a police trap as Batman tells Robin to slow down, directing him where to go as he activates the holograms, confusing the police who are tailing them as to which road Batman went down. Batman thinks the reinforcements will be called but Robin notices they're all moving south as the police radio calls for all units back to base. Batman knows that whatever it is, it's worse than them as on the AA subway line, the train comes to an abrupt stop thanks to the tunnel ahead collapsing. The people are helped off by subway workers as Alfred tells Batman about the explosions in the subway, noting how all four explosion sites are equidistant from police HQ. Outside of the GCPD, a reporter asks Captain Ramirez about the supposed gas leak in the police HQ that has led them to evacuate the building, but the captain assures her that there is no harm done, and the subway does indeed run under the police HQ. Suddenly, the captain is shot by a sniper as Two-Face and his gang make their way into the destroyed station, telling the gang to spread out and have some fun while he heads to the GCPD evidence room. Jim meanwhile tells Cecil that there is no cover-up and he needs to get out of the building now, but outside his office he finds Two-Face's gang looting the building. Bullock is also in the office, knowing that this is some paramilitary assault and they are the last ones left in the building. Jim tells him to get himself outside since he's going back in as Batman sees the bat signal turn on on top of the GCPD, telling Alfred that they need the cycle. Robin knows that the cycle wasn't ready, but Batman knows the boy wasn't ready for it, not wanting to get the boy killed as Alfred sends out the bat cycle, telling them where they can meet it as on the rooftop of the GCPD, Two-Face's gang finds Gordon by the bat signal, intending on throwing him from the roof as Batman arrives, smashing one of the men into the signal, asking Jim what it's all about. Jim says that it's about the loot from the Lincoln Savings heist since it's in the evidence room and meanwhile, the GCPD is flooded with fake gas leak calls and sniper fire from the street, causing all the cops to leave. Batman asks if Robin is getting this, telling Jim that he's talking with his intern and he should get the ex-commissioner to safety. Jim, however, reminds Batman that he's still on the job till Monday and this is his turf, but Batman tells him that there is a long way down through the stairs or a short way down off the rooftop. Jim chooses the short way, leaping off the building with Batman as Robin, meanwhile, takes down the snipers who are keeping the police pinned down. One of the punks says that it never mattered who they hit as long as they give their guys inside the GCPD 10 minutes of chaos. Two-Face and his men, meanwhile, find their time is up as Bullock confronts them, opening fire but Two-Face is faster, hitting Bullock in the chest. Before Dent can escape, Batman and Gordon confront him, but Dent was hoping only half of the duo would show up. Jim always knew that Dent was ambitious, but this is unconcerned consolable, but Harvey knows that the cops and criminals are cut from the same cloth. He throws one of Batman's own remote batarangs which he took from evidence at Batman, who falls over thanks to the batarang, firing his bat dart into the neck of Jim who is knocked out by it. Dent takes Jim's unconscious body down the hole into the ground, telling Batman they are going to leave quietly with the loot and Gordon and Bullock is busy dying on the floor, so if Batman makes a move, Gordon dies as well. He asks the hero if he should toss a coin to decide what to do, but Batman decides to take care of Bullock, taking the man out to the cops who think that Bullock is Batman's hostage. Batman tells them what happened to the lieutenant when suddenly Robin on the bat cycle speeds past, cleaning the cops up with a grapple rope. Batman yells at him to go, detaching the cable as they speed off into the night. Robin tells Batman that he found three snipers and once they get to the cave, Bruce asks Alfred if they have picked up a signal, showing Robin that the dart he accidentally hit Gordon with had a tracker in it and he had planned on tracking Dent with it thanks to the relay sensors he has planted all over the city. Out in Burnside, the community begins finding money that has been given to them via the mail as Dent continues to play games with Gordon's life, flipping the coin again and again to see if the man lives. Gordon knows that Harvey should just kill him now since it will happen sooner or later, but Dent knows that he wanted to but the coin said let him live and he kept getting the same results on the flips. He wonders if Gordon knew what was in the armored vans besides the 31 million, revealing that it carried documents under federal subpoena. Gordon accidentally spills the wine Dent gave him, causing Harvey to die for it out of anger, but it was all part of Gordon's plan as he plants the dart tracker on Harvey's suit. Harvey decides it's time to leave, knowing that in a slightly different universe, him and Jim Gordon might actually get along. Alfred soon gets a signal on the dart as elsewhere, Selina Carl uses her computer skills to listen in 
on Batman's radio frequency, tracking him and Dent and learning that Dent is possibly heading to a new hideout. Batman follows after him, finding that Dent goes into a florist shop as Robin hides in plain sight, citing the undercover cops and a few of Dent's goons hiding in the brush of the park. Dent Mimo meets with Barbara in the park at their spot, bringing her flowers from the florist. Barb wants to see his face since it's been so long, looking at Harvey's scarred visage as he says that, that all their dreams they shared are coming true, although it's not in the way he expected. Barb believes in him, knowing that with everything he's gone through, all he will get is a slap on the wrist, but Harvey doesn't think so, since after what he's done, that door is closed. Barb doesn't think it matters now, trying to arrest Harvey as the undercover cops wait for their signal while the goons wait to get a clear shot. Batman knows that if Barb takes him down, they have no way of finding Jim, as Harvey knows that she won't be shooting him. He clicks on the cuffs as he reveals that he has kidnapped her father. Suddenly Catwoman attacks from above as the police move in, firing on Dent who escapes into the nearby streets and sewers. Catwoman tells Robin to follow Dent and she will catch up as Batman arrives, chasing after Dent who makes it back to his hideout, ranting to Gordon about how Barbara has changed. Jim knows that she has a job to do, so what did Dent expect for her? Gordon thinks that she finally is seeing how spineless Dent was and how much of an opportunist he is. Out of anger, Harvey shoots Jim in the chest as the man hopes that he'll find an excuse for Barb over what he just did, since she'll never forgive him for this. Harvey panics thanks to making a decision without the coin, knowing nothing matters now as Batman appears, knowing it matters to him. Two-Face tells Batman that there are two of him, stuck in one body, constantly bickering with one another, and they would have killed each other unless they learned to coexist. Two-Face says that Harvey was the one who gave him the inspiration, and he liked the man since he was dedicated to the rule of law while being surrounded by evil. The villain believes that good is weak, and it's constrained by its own nature, and evil only fears greater evil, which is where Batman comes in since he uses the tools of evil to do good, but doing so stops him from being good. He thinks that good and evil are means to an end, and they are two sides of the same coin, as Batman tells Harvey that he wants to help the man. The villain shows him the briefcase he has, and says that none of this would have happened had Batman not broken up that heist in the first place. Dent opens fire on the hero, trying to escape, but Batman grapples him down onto a train track. Harvey tells him that he hates saying goodbye to his lair, hitting a detonator and blowing up the subway. Catwoman and Robin meanwhile hear the bomb go off, as hundred dollar bills begin to rain down on them. Selina thinks all they need to do is follow the money as Harvey finds the unconscious Batman within the rubble, discovering thanks to his cracked cow that he is really Bruce Wayne. Two-Face takes a picture of the injured billionaire but Robin and Catwoman arrive, forcing him to slink away into the darkness as Robin tends to Bruce, finding that he is still alive. Selina tells him to take him home to Alfred and not to go to any hospitals, shocking Robin that she knows who he is. Selina says that she knows that Robin is really Drake Winston as well and that they can take the Batmobile back to Wayne Manor. Selina thinks that Bruce has Drake all figured out by giving him access to the car and the gadgets, but Drake says that Bruce has to keep him close by until he figures out if he's a threat or not, but that's up to Bruce to decide. He finds himself wondering though if Dent is spreading his stolen money around Burnside and he's outing corrupt officials, how bad can he be? Selina understands the difference between her, Bruce and Harvey, since Harvey is crazier but he gets better results. Selina is soon introduced to the Batcave for the first time as Alfred asks if she'll be taking her cat back, telling Drake that he's seen Bruce in worse condition, but not much worse. Later on, Bruce awakens, thinking that the Selina in front of him is just a dream, hoping that heaven isn't like this. Selina thinks that he will be out of action for a while thanks to his cracked ribs and multiple fractures, but Bruce gets up, asking what was the briefcase Harvey had. Selina says that it's related to the heist that Batman broke up as Lincoln's savings and loans set up the heist, and they don't care about money, but there was some paperwork that had to disappear quick, since they have been running federal aid funds through some mobbed up front companies, which leaves only pennies left to improve the city, while the millions go to certain politicians, and thanks to Batman, the paperwork ended up in police evidence. Selina reveals that as long as Harvey has the case, he owns a governor, a senator, a mayor, and a new police commissioner. As Selina helps Bruce through the manor, she reveals that Harvey knows that Bruce is now Batman, telling him that they could have run the city with that case, but Bruce isn't interested in that, thinking that she should go and hook up with Harvey if that's what she's interested in. 
He says that he thought about them every day, but Selena knows that, that he didn't even know that she was alive or dead. Bruce thought that he was going to find her, but figured that she was dead, but soon he just stopped looking and she came back. He asks if she ever wanted to just be normal as they go and see Drake, who says that the police found Jim Gordon's body in the tunnel. Bruce knows he has to call and talk with Barbara, putting on a story about being in Zurich, but he tells her that Jim was a kind man to him once when he was little. Two-Face meanwhile tells the gathered mob bosses that he wishes to have charges dropped against them, but they know that will be difficult. Harvey thinks that, that they will do it anyway since he now owns them and they will do what he says. They try and cut him in on the money they are getting, but Two-Face tells him that Gotham's money will belong to Gotham now instead of the men, and if anything is to happen to him, the papers he now has will go public and lead right back to them. He asks Carmine Falcone what his kickback is as Falcone isn't wavered by Two-Face's posturing since he's a constant in this deal thanks to his construction, transportation and sanitation companies running everything. He continues to rant about how important he is to this deal as Two-Face flips his coin, knowing that if it's heads, he'll do something nice, but if it's tails, he'll make him do something crazy. The coin lands on heads, so Two-Face decides that he's going to do something nice for the people of Gotham, shooting Falcone in the head. Harvey later goes to see Jerome, thinking that the remodel of his mechanic shop is looking good. He hopes the man got his parcel and Jerome reveals that he did get the half a million dollars that Harvey sent them, wondering where Harvey got it from, but all he will say is that it was from the Bruce Wayne Foundation. Jerome immediately knows he's lying, thinking that he was spreading stolen money around Burnside and the people desperately needed it so they didn't ask where it came from. Harvey says the money belonged to the people and he just stole it back from people who stole it from them. So he's doing some good, but Jerome tells him the snipers at the police station he robbed fired into a crowd of innocents and they were marching for Harvey, but the villain thinks that it was necessary since he's got real power and change to make the city better now. He tells Jerome to look at his deformed face, telling him it hurts to do anything now, and Jerome however thinks that he now has the face he deserves, telling Harvey to leave his shop. Two-Face however knows he can't just stop this despite what Harvey thinks. He flips the coin, wondering why it will always be like this as later, Drake comes by only to find that Harvey has killed Jerome. Harvey tries to tell Drake to open the package he left for him, telling him it's for the junior Batman for saving his life. Drake throws the money back at Two-Face, saying that when he's finished with the man, the ugly side of him will be the pretty side. Harvey runs into the streets calling for help and telling people that Drake shot Jerome as Drake beats him, pulled off by some passers-by. Harvey tells the people to watch Duke until the cops come as Bruce Meemole believes Harvey is on a murder spree after Falcone and Jerome were found dead, but Alfred doesn't think he's done since Dent called asking to see Bruce and he'll be there within 20 minutes. Bruce tells his friend that he'll be ready for him and not to interfere since he needs to play this just right. Bruce meets with Harvey in the Batcave which impresses Harvey as Bruce asks to see his coin that changes destiny, so Harvey gives it to him knowing Bruce works for him now and his Robin is now in police custody, and thanks to his ties to the riots, he might even go to jail. Harvey reveals that he also got a picture of the unconscious Bruce in the Batsuits, so if Bruce doesn't help him, he'll release it. Bruce says he'll never work with Harvey, and he'll have to kill him if he can. Harvey pulls his gun on Bruce, but the hero knows that there is another side to the coin, and another way it could have happened. He says that Dent was working with Batman all along to take down the mob, and they burned his face when he got too close, but he never gave up, and they'll fix his face while Batman rounds up the bad guy and then after Dent has gone through a few months of therapy, he can come home a hero, at which time Batman will retire and have given the Wayne fortune to Dent to use to clean up the city the right way. Two-Face thinks he's too far gone for all of that, but Bruce wants him to let the coin decide, flipping it at Harvey as Catwoman arrives, cutting down the giant penny hanging above them. The coin rolls into Harvey, knocking him from the platform and onto a rocky cliff below. Harvey tries to reach for his gun as Bruce tells him that he's coming for him. He asks for Selena's help with the cable as Two-Face sees two possible paths before him, one where he kills Bruce and then kills Selena, or the other where Selena hands Bruce the cable to help Harvey up. The coin soon lands on heads and Harvey lets go of Bruce, knowing he'll be okay but the cable hook pierces his hand, saving Harvey from certain death as the man says that he can see the path to the future and every choice they make is beautiful. He thinks that they have made a difference and people's lives are better for it and the two Gothams are gone now and all of 
the pain was worth it for that. The cable above him soon snaps, plunging Two-Face to his death into the depths of the cave. Bruce demands to know how Selina could have let that happen, as Selina thinks that the man was going to kill Bruce, but he reveals that he rigged the game and palmed the real coin, and switched it with the two-headed coin that he would have won the toss with. Selina thinks that Harvey was too broken and too far gone to be saved, and Bruce knows they aren't the same as he was, and he's no killer. Selina becomes enraged, knowing that Bruce is just a poor rich boy who, if he ever worked a day in his life, Batman wouldn't exist. Selina says that she has been chasing the stolen documents for months, but she foolishly thought that saving Batman and Bruce's life was more important. She reveals that Bruce actually gave Harvey back his own coin, but Bruce doesn't think that's even possible as Selina decides it's time for her to leave, taking her cat back with her, but leaving the collar for Bruce. Bruce looks over the collar as Alfred returns, finding that the collar was miked, so Selina knew what they were planning all along. Later on, Bruce picks up Drake from the police station, having handed over Dent's gun that tied Harvey to all of the killings and freed Drake of any wrongdoing. He shows the boy a rusty old bicycle in Wayne Manor, telling Drake to click the button on the keys he gave him. Doing so reveals the bike is just a hologram for the Bat Cycle. Bruce says that he wants Drake to have anything he wants, so Drake reminds Bruce of the baby they both both saw when they first met, but Bruce already knows they're setting up a $10 million trust fund for her. Drake knows that the girl has nothing but with the money, suddenly all her family will begin to come out of the woodwork for it, so he wants the young girl to be adopted by his sister and her husband who live upstate, and if Bruce wants to give her the money in 20 years or leave it for her in his will, Drake will swear that he will never tell the girl why Bruce Wayne really did it. Bruce agrees, shaking Drake's hand as the boy suits up. Bruce wonders what he's calling himself these days, so Drake says he's thinking the Avenging Eagle is a good name, but it's not final. Later on, Barbara Gordon is delivered a package from Selina, which contains not just all of the paperwork, but the photo of Bruce as Batman. Selina knows that the case will incriminate Gotham's elite, and she should decide whether she should be willing to make some powerful enemies or not. Selina transfers a large chunk of Bruce's money out of his account to hers, as she tells Barb that she will help guide her and be her oracle of sorts to her, since together they can make the city they both love a different place. Bruce meanwhile is awoken from a dream by Alfred, who was to remind him to wake up at midnight. Alfred asks if he's going out on the town, but Bruce hasn't decided, flipping the coin as the bat signal on the roof lights up. 